Hi there, I'm Mickey Taylor, and you're watching Studio Q. Studio Q Show, now you know. Well, you know, it's important to really service us at this time in our history. We are one another's support systems. And when the opportunity came to speak to the women of the USL, oh yeah, I was right there. I was so on board. Uh, you know, I really want to talk to them about owning their lives and mastering their purpose with distinction. You know, style is... Uh, has taken on a different uh, meaning in this era in our lives. It's not just about how we look. It's really the bravado in which we carry ourselves in. And mm -hmm. so, yeah, I'm looking forward to that time of being with them, talking with them, talking to them, and certainly having a say-so in their journey. Oh my gosh, well I think she'd be so proud. I think that uh, she would just be, my mother would sit back and she'd smile about all of us because she knew, it was very interesting her insight, she really knew what each of us was destined to do and I think that she would be very, very proud and that she would just keep encouraging me to, you know, use all of it. That gift that God gave you, mm -hmm. I don't want you to have any left. She was our first role model and icon, and my mother had what I've come to call next ability. She was always miles ahead of us, mm -hmm. you know, and sometimes we'd come home and we'd think, Mom, such and such and such. She was like, yeah, and what else? <laughs> and you know what else? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Yes, yes, absolutely, absolutely. For a long time we had poodles, and then we had Pomeranians, and you know, so my mother, whatever was trending, my mother had it. So that's how we came of age, yeah, I mean, even like getting ready for church, like everything had a ceremony and a style, you know, quoted to it, quotient to it, so yeah, that was mom. Well, what I remember the most is getting up having to step over musicians. It's like, who are all these people in our house sleeping on the floor? It's like, okay, can they go home now? <laughs> yeah, uh, but it was pretty fascinating. But uh, some of the things that stayed with me, each of them had uh, a signature style, if you will, and that stayed with me a lot. You know, for, for instance, even uh, the late Ella Fitzgerald, I remember when she would send her Christmas cards, my mother would, would hang them on the mantle and every year because they, would, they were fold-outs and they would drop down to the floor and they would tell a story or like Sammy Davis Jr. he did everything which is like in such great fanfare so one year when they were in Europe uh, my mother came back home and Sammy sent home this big monkey for me and the monkey was so big he had to have his own seat on the on the plane <laughs> you know that tells you a lot about that era versus this right, one right. but yeah they all had such a great sense of style and and they also looked out for one another and they really supported one another you know like whoever was in town in the city of Newark you know my mother and Sarah and all of them they would run down to see them wherever they were performing and you know like I remember one night you know my mother uh, talked about how you know Sinatra was coming and together they were all going to see so-and-so recently I talked to Quincy Jones my mother told me a story once that Quincy introduced Sarah Vaughn to the song Misty and we all know that that was a signature like a theme song of hers and I asked him about it and Quincy in his 30 year old mind because he's so brilliant he continued the story where I left off he said oh yeah he said I was in Paris I ran down to the boat because I remember my mother told me they traveled by ocean liner during the early 50s he said I ran down to the boat to meet Sass and I had this little piece of paper in my pocket on which Earl Garner had written a song called Misty and I gave it to her and so we all know the rest is history yeah. but you know it was just evocative of such an important era in our history you yeah. know and so part of some of the things that I talk about on the road is that I really want us to know the truth of who we are mm -hmm. we style we style in every arena when it comes to the arts when it comes to fashion I mean we're the people who painted in the belly on our houses you know Maasai men colored their hair in red and women you know elongated their necks with like you know layers of collars and jewels and yeah, I just want us to know how fierce we are. <laughs> Oh 
Oh my gosh. I guess she would say, I told you. I told you. And all that time that you wasted, like thinking, oh, I can't do it. I'm not sure about this. It's like, girl, I told you just going out there and take it, just like mommy said. I remember the day I said, in fact, it was so special because my mother used to bring magazines home from Europe all the time. Mm -hmm. And beautiful as though they were, there was no one in there that looked like me. And when the day she brought home Essence, I remember I sat on the dining room floor and I curled up and I just looked through page after page after page. And it was like, wow. <laughs> It's hard to put in words, mm -hmm. but I knew that something was very different, that this spoke to a truth. It's, it was almost like a magnet. You know how a magnet catches everything metal right. in its path. It was like that. I was just like so pulled into this magazine. And then a few years later, I had the opportunity to go over uh, on a tour and see Essence. This was the very early days. They mm -hmm. were in a brownstone on uh, East 31st Street. The, the brownstone was so fresh, like the walls were still brick and, and piles of manuscripts and so forth were everywhere. And there were these glorious black women, one after another, sitting at typewriters. And there was images all over the wall. And it was like, oh my gosh, this is about us. Yes. Look at us. This is what we do. <laughs> and there was nothing on television like that. There was nothing. I mean, just, you know, and it makes me marvel because when we grew up, no one asked you if you wanted to be an editor. They told little black girls, get a job, get a trade. We didn't know that we could be journalists. It was like, wow. So here was a whole building full of black journalists, like, yeah. I certainly like to think that I've been that voice in their ear, telling them how amazing we are, telling them how beautiful we are, certainly through every page that held up the mirror on black womanhood all shades, all shapes, all sizes, all facets, talking about our beauty intel, telling us how we must not only survive but thrive in the early days at least in a country where the standard of beauty had nothing to do with us, talking to us about products when in fact the products that addressed our needs could fit in the span of my two arms, mm -hmm. uh, talking to us about fashion and style when we were almost like the invisible woman and so if I look back at over the 30 years and watch how masterful we are, and here we are in every corridor having our say, we're in every office building, we're at 1600 Pennsylvania <laughs> Avenue showing out. It's like, it's, it's been amazing to be both a witness mm -hmm. and a participant. Oh, I'd have to say Versailles, the Battle of Versailles 73, when American designers defeat the French and the likes of Yves Saint Laurent, Emmanuel Ungaro, Givenchy, with a cabin of women of color and no fanfare, just great sass. The way that thing that we bring to clothing that when we get dressed, no one else does it like us. And how they were the tour de force. And that did change the course of history. I remember being a model during that period and struggling to get work before then and after that getting hired mm -hmm. and doing uh, my first television commercial. I remember, you know, going into a showroom one day and, you know, having them, you know, say that, oh, Mrs. So-and-so would never see you like that. And, and the next day, the next time I went in getting hired by that agency wow. and going to work on 7th Avenue the same day, it, it, it gave us such a a grand visibility. I remember Givenchy hired his first cabin of all black models after that. And so it was the seminal moment that really changed the course of fashion history oh, for African American models, let alone women. Studio Q Show.